Hey everybody, it's Jack Mealy. We're uh, coming at you today from the Savannah studios here in Covington. Um, we had a little bit of a problem with our live feed last night, so uh, I figured that I would start doing a few videos here to demonstrate a few techniques that you can use in your mix process that might make life a little bit easier. Uh, today, we're going to be concentrating on uh, a mix that I'm doing for an artist uh, named Ingrid Lucia. It's, uh, it's a song called Wanderlust. And um, what's going on here is that I have the mix kind of dialed in and I find that the guitars are kind of getting in the way of the vocal. Um, the, the guitars are, they're not, you know, they're not super busy. There's a lot of, there's a lot of great space on there uh, with the guitar, but I find that uh, tonally it's, it's, the whole thing just seems like it's kind of, um, getting in the way. I can't concentrate on the vocal because the guitar is distracting me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a, uh, a technique. Uh, it's actually a psychoacoustical principle called the Haas effect. And, okay, so what is the Haas effect? How does it work? It's a principle that basically says that if a sound is played and a, another sound, a delayed sound, is played between 10 and 30 milliseconds from the time that the first sound is played, the brain doesn't know that it's an echo. It doesn't hear it as, it hears it as one sound. And it actually will, it will kind of, it's almost like an echolocation. It's the way that our ear and our brain perceives uh, space. It actually uh, uses it as a way to locate where the sound came from. So how does how do we use this in in mixing and and how do we use it practically? So let's say you have a guitar that's that's right in the middle, and that guitar is getting in the way of something. So what you would do is you could take a stereo delay and you could put it on that channel, and you would turn the left side or the right side, it doesn't matter which one you prefer, you would turn the left side all the way off and then you would take the right side and you would put the delay at 100% and then you would make the delay on the right side 10 to 30 milliseconds. You'd have to play with it to see which one sounds the best depending on the source. So you take the right side and you delay it by 10 or 20 so milliseconds. And all of a sudden, as soon as you unbypass that plugin, it's going to make things really wide and really, it's gonna sound like the guitar is, is wrapping around your ears. So in principle, we're using this concept that the brain that the brain does when it when it perceives where sound comes from in a spatial capacity it's we're basically using that in the mix to get the guitar out of the way you know because once you take a, a mono channel and you make it stereo if it's panned 100 percent left and right it's it's still mono i mean it's it's coming in equally in both sides so it would even though it doesn't really sound to me the same as when you have a mono track it it's still kind of perceived as mono because it's equal on each side so let's let's look at pro tools and let me demonstrate what i'm talking about here okay so here we are inside of pro tools all right we're going to be concentrating right now on these here is the this is the vocal right here so what i did was i have the two guitars run to this bus right here and then I have just my normal like reverbs and delays right here on that uh, plugin, and then I have this stereo slap delay. I'm gonna bypass this for right now so that we can just sort of hear what it sounds like uh, with no Haas effect uh, going into the guitar. So let's take a listen. So as you can hear, guitar is playing really, really great stuff. It's just that it's kind of in the way of the vocal. So what I did here was I have a slap delay, and on the left-hand side, I've got the gain. Uh, I'm sorry, the mix all the way to zero percent because I don't want I don't want anything to happen over here. I want this to be sort of shut off. So over here, 
on the right hand side, I have the gain um, to zero. I have the mix all the way to a hundred because I don't want it. I don't want to hear the original hit. I want just to hear the the wet. I just want to hear the echo. So then at the delay section, I have it set to 17.75 milliseconds. That's just where I felt it sounded the best. Uh, it could be all the way up to 30. You have to play with it. You just move it around and play play with uh, and and it will make a drastic effect as you hit the play button and move it. You'll hear it really starting to make a a big effect. Uh, and I have the feedback set at zero because I want only the initial uh, echo. I don't want it to be you know dot 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 dot. I don't want it to be hitting more than once. So I'm going to go ahead and hit play. And then while it's playing, I'm going to bypass the plugin, unbypass the plugin, so you can hear what it sounds like. <laughs> So I'm going to go ahead and solo the guitar right now so you can hear. That is how you would use the Haas effect in practical purposes inside of your mixes. So that's our lesson for today, the Haas effect. Using it to get things wide, to get them spread, to get them out of the way of whatever your focus in the middle of the, uh, the track is supposed to be. I hope you can use it. I hope you enjoyed this video and please give a comment or a like and um, I'll see you next time. Thank you.